You wanted to know about themes, let's talk about them. So themes are a resource that you can use in Godot to take any bit of user interface in your game. You drag and drop the theme in the theme slot on any control node and this node and all their children are going to inherit the visual properties from that theme. It's a little like CSS with HTML. It's a resource that only contains graphic information about the colors you should use, how the buttons should style when you click them, things like these. So I have one prepared here. I'm going to show you another example in the coroutine tutorial that you can find on the channel. I select the interface and go down to the theme resource. It's right here. I'm going to drag and drop it and instantly, not only the top level panel, but all the children update to use the information in that theme, which includes some information about the spacing of my rows and columns or HBox and VBox containers in this case. So let's double click on the theme that I have here to see how it looks. First, when you double click on the theme resource, you will get an area that shows how your interface will look and how the various control nodes that you can create in the game will look. And the advantage of this area is that it's interactive. So you can hover the elements to see the hover style. You can click to see what happens when you click, when they are in focus, things like these. So you can test the checkboxes, etc. Now, to create a new theme, you're going to the inspector and you want to click the new file button here. This is the button you use to create a new resource. And you're going to look for theme in the list. You create that and it's going to create a default theme that's going to use the old Godot interface. You want to save this resource from the start, I think. That's always a good thing to do when you create resource. So click on the tool icon in the top right of the inspector, save as, and let's call it test theme. You can save it as a T-res, as a dot theme file, however you'd like. It's right here at the root of my project. I'm going to drag and drop that theme on my bit of interface. We're going to use the style guide scene here, drag and drop it instead of my first theme and we're going to bounce back to the default look of the Godot interface. If I open that theme I can expand it from everywhere in the inspector but I'm going to double click on the theme file to open it entirely in the inspector and to have that theme editor here because we're going to need it. By default you can only change the default font. So I've prepared some fonts in my project. I'm going to look for Montserrat this one, I created a font resource, drag and drop it here, and everything will update to use that font, except the titles, which have their own font built in, like hard-coded in them as an override font, which is how you handle fonts, by the way. You set a default, and then you can override the font per object, so you can not only override per theme element, you could change the font of the buttons only, or just of the check button, something like that. For example, you can use a monospace font for the text edit, which we are going to do in a second, for a more code-like font. But then you can also override the font and the properties from the theme on the individual node. So I select the title, and I go down to the custom font in the inspector. You can see that the box is checked and I have a title font. If I deactivate it, for this element only, it bounces back to the default font from the theme. If I activate it again and I have to drag my title font once more, it's gonna bounce back to what it had before, to the look it had before. Okay, let me open the test theme once again. In order to add properties that you can edit in the inspector, you need to click that edit theme menu in the bottom panel. You can expand it with shift F12 or using the double arrow that you have at the bottom. So you want to go to edit theme and add class items. Not just adding individual items because it takes a lot of time, but adding class items. By class, what this option means is really all the control nodes, so I'm going to filter the add list to control node, and a class is one of these nodes. The pop-up menu, the accept dialog, the pop-up, etc. 
So that's what you're going to add to your theme. Say you want a theme where you just need labels, buttons, you know, you don't necessarily need to change everything. So you, you might just want to add these items. I'm going to go add class item. And then you have to enter the class name. It's not the best UX, but that's how it works at the moment. So you can enter, for example, I want to add the items for buttons, or you can click the option on the right to have a long list where you will have all the classes that you can add. So you will find, for example, button at the top, but you can also find a font option. You can find a label, things like these. Okay, let's add all the items for the button. So when I click add all, you can see a new category appears in the inspector. And if you have folding on, it will be folded here. And you can change the font color on the button. So as I change it, you're going to see it's going to affect all the buttons because we are changing the button base class, right? So it affects the check button, the option button, etc. as well. So you can change the default font color. Then you can change the separation between the button and the icon, for example, and you can override the font here and you can override the individual styles for the button. So these ones are going to use style box resources or textures. Let's do that just for the normal style. We're going to create a new style box flat and the default is going to be just a flat color. You can then click to expand your style box resource. You get a preview, the style box, and you have a few options to change if you want rounded corners or if you want borders first and foremost. I'm going to change the button's background color with the background color property. Let's take a bluish color and then we're going to add some border on the side. Let me add one at the bottom as well. There you go. And now our button has an outline. And because we have only added a style box for the normal button style and not on hover, when I hover the button, it's going to bounce back to the default style from Godot. Okay, I'm going to clear that one, which is a little ugly. Next, we are going to look at the text edits if you want to override the font here. So edit theme as class item, and we're going to go with text edits. Add them all. If I go down to text edit, there are quite a few colors because you use that for syntax highlighting and for editable code, but you can see the font here under the font category. I'm going to go search for one I've prepared or let's let's uh, create a new font resource. So click here, new dynamic font. This is a font created from a font file on your system, be it a TTF or OTF file. We're going to click on new dynamic font, expand the resource. So this one, you can see the text disappeared because we don't have any font in there, data that Godot can render. So we have to drag and drop a TTF or an OTF file. I have some source code fonts here that I've searched in my project. I'm going to get the medium one, drag and drop it in the font data. And now I have a look that's a lot more like code and a monospace font. So every character is going to take the same width, the same amount of space. That is the gist of it. If you want a complete UI theme to create tools for your game or a level editor or something like that, you can do two things by clicking on the edit theme button. You can create an empty template. It's going to add all the properties from all the classes that you can add with add class item. And you can create the editor template. Empty editor template is going to give you the Godot 3 or 3.1 or whatever version you are running theme. It's going to fill all the properties with the colors and the interactions from the editor. And then you can create one from your current editor theme. So not the default one. This is the colors and settings you have set by going to editor, editor settings. And let's change, for example, the base color. We're going to go with some weird purple here. I'm going to save and restart the editor. It looks horrible, but if you have some specific color, if you have a dark theme, for example, that you're using, you can create from the current editor theme and you will get your purple colors as you'd expect. But you can also create an empty editor template, which is going to add all the slots in 
your test theme here and it's going to add all the icons from the editor as you can see so it there's a lot of complexity here but it allows you to create an application that's going to reuse all of the defaults from the Godot editor and if you don't want that be sure to uh, delete the theme create a new theme resource in the inspector and please allow me to revert the theme because it's horrible there you go so I, I've broken my test theme here I'm going to create a new theme resource and overwrite it so save as and my test theme I'm going to overwrite and sometimes when you do operations like these the UI will not refresh so you have to restart the scene reopen it now we can recreate an editor theme editor based theme to get all the colors from the editor we don't get the font that we had before you don't get the same font size when you do that so I'm going to go get my default font again which is a Monsera in this case drag and drop it on the default font slot and then you can get working on the theme I'm going to leave it at this for this video. There's quite a complexity in all the options that you can edit in the theme. As you can see, lots of textures. The important thing to know is that first you should build some UI for your game and see which nodes that you use and how many options you really need. Because if you're not using the checkboxes, uh, the drop down menus and in general if you're not creating tools you don't need all of these so it would be wise to then add the individual class items as you need them instead of trying to add all the options and try to customize them all from the start now for the gquest theme that we use for our tutorials now we are reusing the editor as a base because we want the debug UI in our games to look like it integrates with Godot as we create lots of tutorials for it. You can find the theme that we are creating on GitHub. It has these transparent panels to help to create some debug interface that still lets you see the game in the background. And we're going to refine it over time for the needs of tutorials and debugging in your game. You will also find a growing library of utilities and components that you can reuse. If you have any questions, again, please go ahead, ask them in the comments, because this is what I use to figure out which tutorials to do next, especially on the topic of UI. That said, thank you kindly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and let's see one another in the next one. Bye-bye.